All right, so we're going to work on adding rational expressions. And we're going to ease into it. Our first example, we will have like denominators. Um, if you remember from adding and subtracting fractions, you need a common denominator in order to add or subtract any fractions. So here's an addition problem. Here's a fraction plus a fraction. So we first check out the denominators. Are they the same? I don't care that it's an x plus 4. I do care that it is the same denominator. It is a like denominator, or we have often just used the phrase common denominator. So when you have a common denominator, you keep your denominator, and you add the numerator. So we're going to take an x plus a 5. x plus 5, those are not like terms, so we'll just write them side by side, x plus 5. If you remember, we are not going to cross off these x's because this is an x plus 5. We were talking about those as being factors, excuse me, as factors in previous videos. An x plus 5 is not the same thing as an x plus 4, and I can't, this is just a term. I can't cancel a term when it's connected to another term with that plus. All right, so our answer, what is the sum? It's x plus 5 over x plus 4. But let's also make sure that we are identifying the, domo the domain excuse me, for all the x's as long as x does not equal. If we look at our denominator, that x plus 4, x's cannot equal a negative 4. That's what would make that denominator 0. And there we go. See, that wasn't so bad. Part B. Well, our denominators look a little more complicated, but let's just check them out. We have an x squared plus 3x and an x times x plus 3. If we take this x squared plus 3x, um, do you notice that there is a common factor of x we could factor out? If you factor an x out of both terms, you're left with x plus 3. So really, even though it's in what we would call standard form, in factored form, we can see that those are the same. We have a common denominator. That's one thing we'll work on when we do not have a common denominator is we, we want to get our denominators into factored form because then we can actually see what they have in common and what they don't. So we have another common denominator. So let's just go ahead and do that addition. Um, our denominator will stay the same. I'm just going to leave that as x times x plus 3. Our numerator is we have this 2x plus 1 plus the other numerator 3x minus 8. And now we're going to add these numerators, to, numerators together. Because we're adding, we're looking for like terms. So this 2x will add with the 3x to give us 5x. The 1 will add with the negative 7. 1 plus a negative, sorry, <laughs> negative 8 is negative 7 over x times x plus 3. So we've got our answer, but let's just make sure we are defining it. Um, we've got to make sure that our x is never equal. What would make this denominator 0 if x was a 0? So let's not let x be that. Or if x was a negative 3, that would make that a 0. So let's avoid that.